Hey folks, this is Vince with Ads Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to check out Taste of Power. This is a game that you can find on Steam's Early Access program for about 15 bucks. though there is a free demo, should you wish to download and try it out before buying it. I stress Early Access, that means the game is still under development, and as such, everything that you're about to see is subject to change. This is an RTS, although it is very rough around the edges right now. There's a Units Review section, to where you can learn about the two factions. There's Atlantis here, which is sort of like your Europe-style units. You've got your Crusaders and your Troopers, your Templars, Centurions, and so on. Then Under Sky, that's like the nations of China, Japan, Mongolia, where you've got units like Imperials, Nomads, Ultimatum. You can learn about the stats and all that on the right-hand side. None of that is featured in-game, so you may want to check that out first. Options menu under sound, music and sound sliders, display, uh, there's high and v-sync. I mean, you can toggle this if you want to. Not too many individual settings here, but we'll leave it on high for right now. Controls, keyboard sensitivity, mouse sensitivity, and lastly, game tips. Definitely come here, learn about the game a little bit, just so that you can get a feel of what's going on. There is an in-game tutorial of sorts. Uh, if you click on single play, there's uh, Art of War where it'll go through tactics and management, features of the European warriors, features of the Chinese warriors, technologies, and features of the economy. Admittedly, I didn't go through any of them. I jumped right into Frontier Island because I am very familiar with RTS games. I grew up with Rise of Nations. I grew up with uh, Age of Empires, um, Galactic Battlegrounds, and so on. Uh, I'm, I, love, I love RTS games. Um, so I, I know what I'm doing. So I, I fiddled around with it, and I've got a good idea. But in case you're new to RTS games or new to this game, you may want to check this out just so you can see what is unique about this game. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do Frontier Island. I'm going to choose Europe, and we'll just choose Beginner Difficulty. That way we can take the game at our own pace. There's also, like, Rise of the Sun, should you want to try that out too. But we'll just do Frontier Island for right now. The game will pop up tooltips on occasion saying, hey, your materials are low or your economy is bad, something like that, or you have research that's available, something like that. So uh, you will get interrupted a lot in your initial playthrough. The game does pause whenever these things come up. Okay, so it looks like I'm forced to do all of the tutorial stuff again. So I'm just going to just cycle through all of that. Okay, bottom left-hand corner, there's food, there's um, gold, and there's materials. Uh, the, the top one, that food there, that's how many troops you can field. You can increase that with farms. Money and materials you use for various purchases and upgrades. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and click on the administration here. Let's just click the continue. And then we're going to click on this economy button. Click on the economy button. This allows us to choose where we want to assign our workers. We don't have to select individual workers, right click on a tree or right click on a gold mine or whatever. You just click on uh, commerce or materials or construction. And the number here is how many villagers are assigned to that. Uh, right now I've got 0, zero 005. I've got 0 in commerce, 0 in materials, 5 in construction. So we're going to do 2 to commerce and 2 to materials. Okay, and then we're going to click on construction of buildings and then click on more houses. That way we can get more uh, of those workers. Now Q and E to rotate. Uh, what, what stinks about the rotate feature, sometimes it's difficult to tell where it's going to end up whenever you finally lock it in. Um, and I can't tell the orientation based off this either. Like I can't see a preview of the building, so I can't tell if they're facing the right direction. May not matter to those of you that aren't really into the aesthetics but like for example i put them down up and down like vertical and instead now the house is horizontal so it's like the, the house automatically oriented itself horizontal even though i had to think vertical i don't know why that is okay press to continue maybe this road was in the way possibly but if that was the case then why didn't the construction just say hey you can't do that you know what i mean so again, this game is still a little rough around the edges. We're going to go ahead and build uh, more houses. See, look at that. Now it's building vertical. So it's opposite of what I assign, which is kind of weird. All 
Alright, we'll just do that. The enemy is actively building troops, and soon they will attack your city. For defense, you recommended to build a barrack. All right, so we're going to go ahead and click on construction, and then barracks. We'll just put one, say, over here. You've also got things like farms, which increases your uh, troop limit. You've got forts, which are like technological upgrades. Garrison, which are like defensive... I want to say towers, but they house archers that shoot at nearby enemy troops. Arsenals also allows you to upgrade things. Academy... Uh, technological building, uh, can study personal modification of light troops, engineering yard, study personal modifications of heavy troops. So yeah, each building does something different as you would expect in an RTS game. Alright, it's going to unpause that. Hit continue. Not enough commerce. So yeah, the, the city looks kind of crappy right now with the houses all thrown together. Not really going to worry about that right now. Alright, so now we've got some free workers again. Let's go ahead and assign them to commerce and some materials. No free workers. We've got uh, 531. Alright, let's go ahead and put uh, a farm down. Not enough commerce. And an arsenal might be a good idea. Yeah, like I said, um, there's really no control over what these guys are doing. There's no stone in the game. There's no wood that you have to worry about. It's all commerce. So everything is lumped into one resource. So to build archers, you don't need a bunch of wood. Or to build knights, you don't need a bunch of uh, gold and man... Whatever. You know, you don't need that. You just concentrate on gold if you need more gold. Alright, so at this point in time, we're waiting for the villagers to build everything. Oh, there's the arsenal. It built that first for whatever reason. Um, we need more commerce. So what I may want to do is maybe construct a few more houses. It's either that or assign people away from materials by right-clicking and then go into commerce. It seems like the more troops or the more villagers you assign into commerce or materials, uh, the less effective they are. Notice that the bar is yellow here and green on materials. So the more troops or the more villagers I assign to commerce, the less efficient that gathering process becomes. But for right now, we need a lot of gold, so we'll just deal with it. All right, let's go ahead and assign a trooper. And a couple of rangers. Right-click to set a rally point. If you know your RTSs, then a lot of this will be familiar to you. Settlers allow you to build new cities. So if you want to build another administration building, you can do that. I think we'll go ahead and queue one up. There's also this confederate, Engineers of Europe. He can build defensive construction of the outpost. It can hide up to two squads. Eh, okay. Okay, I think we're ready for a fort now. Just throw that down somewhere. And a garrison may not be a bad idea for defensive purposes. We'll go ahead and rotate that with Q. Um, I want to put one all around if I can. Maybe one there. Maybe one over here. And maybe one to the left. Alright, so now we have our first settler. So we're going to go ahead and build another administrative building over here like it's telling us to. And we'll be able to do what we're doing over here. Build houses, build barracks, other buildings, so on. Recommend at least eight houses. Alright, well, we'll get there when we get there. Alright, 
These archer looking units are ready. They'll shoot at anyone nearby. Alright, so under our fort we can build, I guess we can do like light shooter cavalry units. We could do that. This hawk, heavy cavalry. Okay, this is going up pretty soon. We'll have to send some troops over to protect them. Time to attack. I'm not ready to attack yet. I'd rather build up more. Um, let's go ahead and start researching, say, light armor and heavy armor. One thing I don't like about the upgrade system here is that you can only queue up one at a time. Like, I can only queue up light armor. I can't queue up heavy armor now, melee weapons, range weapons. I can't queue up any of that. I have to wait for that to be finished and then uh, research the next one, which is kind of silly. All right, engineering yard. Um, we'll go ahead and put one of those down. And maybe one of those academies. Yes, oh, we are under attack already. Okay, let's uh, get some troops over there, shall we? Son, ready to discover. Now you'll notice that the troops are using Molotov cocktails. If you're at all familiar with Age of Empires 3, that's what the troops did there. So definitely inspired by that. I liked Age of Empires 3 for the record, uh, where you had cards that you unlocked as you played. It's just a shame that it doesn't currently work on Windows 10, at least not on my computer. Middle mouse button to rotate and pan the camera. As you can see, the physics are a little finicky. Okay, let's go ahead and set some stuff up here while we're waiting. Let's go ahead and put some housing down. We can start earning some resources. Maybe a farm. Wet mine of barracks. First and foremost, these garrisons are really good, so uh, they're great defensive buildings. Put a couple of those down. Okay, while we're waiting for all that to be done, we've got a lot of money. Uh, the more money that we make, uh, the higher the corruption ends up being. There's a little co corruption level here. It's in yellow right now. So it says 30% of the income that the workers bring in will be lost from the treasury. The more we gather, the higher the corruption. Something to keep in the back of your mind. Let's go ahead and train a few more troops. And let's just start buying some of these upgrades. Now, instead of having to click on the building that you want to do research in, you can click on the administrative building, and below the economy, construction, and administrative buttons, you can, it's sort of like a shortcut to get to these things. Uh, recruiting at the barracks, for example, is done here. And queue some more people up. Um, recruiting at the fort, or investigate technology. So you don't have to find the building, click on it, and then find the tech that you want to research, you can just jump to it. We'll do longbows, we'll take that one. Again, you can't queue up multiple, which I don't like. All right, we're out of economy. All right, let's jump back over here. We've got a lot of buildings built now, so we should have a lot of 
a lot of villager. Yeah, six construction. Let's go ahead and change some of that. We'll do four and one. Make some more money. All right, so I guess in the meantime, I mean, we do have a sizable force. So let's go ahead and feel them out a little bit. I do want to leave some troops behind just for defense. So we'll leave, we'll just send these four out. Maybe down here. As far as right-clicking goes, it's a little weird. Uh, you can hold right-click to set the formation, but note the arrows. I don't know if that's that means they're going to be facing in that direction or what, like the... The holding in the right mouse to set the formation is a little weird. Click and hold, and then all right, then drag this way, I guess. But it's it's a little wonky. It's not very user friendly, in my opinion. Now these troops uh, do have individual abilities. The phalanx, for example, whatever troop I have selected can have that. Um, I think archers can build these spiked walls. Just as I said. All right, we'll take that technology and I guess black powder, sure. Again, some of these tooltips repeat, but then it says uh, don't show anymore. You know, that, so it, it, at least it goes away over time. All right, so they're either going to attack from the left or from the right. So we might as well send these three out. We'll be only for, we'll be implemented. Waiting for your only I suspect he's somewhere down there to the south. Oh, I think we're under attack. Another thing that's weird, the units will sometimes uh, either get stuck or not follow like they're supposed to. Um, I wish they would all go the same speed. Like, hey, this one got stuck. I wish they would all stay in formation and go the same speed. There should be a button for that. Alright, so it looks like my troops just gathered up. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I think they're dead. Just saying. We'll be implemented. Okay, and that's it. We won. Now, we played on easy, mind you, and there's other difficulty levels, but that's a quick look at the game, Taste of Power. Um, again, very rough around the edges right now, though I would be curious to come back to it and see what it would be like when it was finally done. If you guys want to see more gameplay, let me know. If you guys haven't already, subscribe to me on Twitch and YouTube. That way you can stay up to date with any new content I've been to publish. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next.